welcome to the International College Options Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Matt and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is part one of today's fair. Be sure to join the additional sessions after this one wraps up. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash ICO. And now I'd like to turn things over to Colin from ICO for a quick introduction of the organization. Thank you very much, Matt. <clears throat> uh, so my name is Colin Johnston. I am one of the directors here at International College Options. Uh, we've been an organization in existence since 20, 2013. We're a nonprofit that is promote, uh, pushes to promote international education, uh, both study abroad and other types by American students. So it's founded by college counselors. Uh, I used to be an admissions rep until I escaped for my MED. You might notice my accent is a little different. I am from Scotland, but I'm actually currently based here in Oregon. So please do enjoy the rest of the evening. Uh, please ask our presenters as many questions as you can. Please do take them up on their offers to contact them and speak to them. Uh, remember, we do have an hour session after this where you can get one-to-one -one, uh, chances to talk to them. Um, we also have our International uh, College Partners booklet, which is available as a PDF. And I will share all of these things in the chat with you right now. Um, finally, uh, to watch all of the presenters and not just the ones in this room, they will be hosted on the web link that I'm sharing in the chat as well. Enjoy. Please ask as many questions as you can. I will pass over to Matt again. Great. Thank you very much. So our first institution this evening is Universidad de Navarra. Wonderful. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to just start sharing my screen. I'm glad to start the, the presentation today. And, and so tonight I'm here to present to Universidad de Navarra. Um, my name is my name is Christina McCarthy. My contact information is down on the on the slide. And if you want to uh, scan the QR code on the side, that will take you to our a web page where you have all the information I'm going to talk about. So Navarra, the University of Navarra is in Spain, in the north of Spain. You can see here in the map where Pamplona lies. That's the city where we are. We're an hour south of France, uh, right in the heart of um, of Europe. And you can I mean, our students when they come to our campus, they take advantage of traveling in Spain and and Europe. Um, the university has seven campuses in the world, so Pamplona and San Sebastian are undergraduate, and the remaining campuses, Barcelona, two in Madrid, New York, San Paolo, and Munich are, Munich are for the, the graduate schools, but that gives you an idea of the internationality of the university. You see the photo of Pamplona. Pamplona is a medium-sized city, very safe, very welcoming, um, very European-style coffee industry, a lot of life in the street. So it's a great environment for, for international students. Now, when we talk about Navarra, the first thing that what I want to say is like three reasons, tell, tell, tell you three reasons why um, we think Navarra could be a good option for you. First of all, interna the internationality of our school. You can see that we're international rank. You see our, our rankings there. For example, first best private university in Spain and 45 in, in the world in, in, according to employers. And then regarding our student body, uh, we have a 28% of international students from 108 different countries. So we have a very diverse campus, um, very vibrant, very fun. Um, the main language on campus is Spanish. So the full immersion of students is, is guaranteed. But we have, as I said, 28% of international students. We also have, have 450 agreements with other universities because we want students to come to us, to come to University of Navarra to study, but we also want to send them out to the world. So the students that come to us in their bilingual programs are required to do minimum one semester abroad. Um, another reason why to choose Navarra is the personal attention to our students. So you see here that we have a one to 12 professor to student ratio, and every student that's admitted in Navarra, it's assigned a mentor. And the, the whole objective, the mentor, is to help the students, I mean, from the academic side, but also personal and professional. And lastly, is the sustainability of our campus. We have been awarded the Green Plaque Award four years in a row, and our campus is green and beautiful, absolutely beautiful. 
Um, now we move into the academics. So the, the University of Nevada is a comprehensive school with 12 schools. You can see those on the screen, the, the 12 schools that we have, but we also have a hospital, we also have two museums, we also have simulation centers and several research centers in both areas, in the sciences and in the humanities. Universidad de Nevada is an international bilingual school. And when I say that, I mean that students are gonna be teach in Spanish and in English. So I always explain that students don't have to be bilingual when they start, but everybody graduates bilingual. We have different options. On, I mean, as we said, you saw before, we have 28% of international students. So we have a, a lot of options in, in, in programs to incorporate the non-Spanish speakers. We have the bilingual programs that you see in the, in, the, in the screen where students can take classes in both languages and they have the option of taking classes in Spanish the first year. And then we have a foundation year, like a gap year, where a student gets classes of Spanish on campus because we have our language institute, and at the same time classes in English from the school of their choice. And then when they move, when they finish the, the foundation year, they can move into a bilingual degree. Um, in simple admission uh, process, everything is done through a portal. We have our own system. Uh, the admission criteria is mainly based on, the, on your high school transcript and your GPA with the exception of medicine, because medicine is always slightly different. No? Um, all our students pay the same tuition. We make no difference between national and international students. Uh, and all students can apply for a financial aid, for a scholarship. And just remind you that we are the only uh, university in Spain that's FAFSA eligible. So the student in the US can complete the FAFSA here in the, in the US, and then whatever student loan the government gives you, they, uh, you can apply those funds to pay for Navarra. Um, our campus, so you, again, I've been sharing many photos of our campus through the presentation, so you can see how beautiful it is. It's, it's a very, it's kind of an American style campus in Europe now, because it's very big, very wide, very green. Uh, we have um, um, we have the spring and the fall, so in that sense, it's, it's pretty, very pretty. In terms of campus life, uh, we have a lot of conference and clubs and activities with the university itself that has like from the museums that um, have activities to, for our students, but also for the broader community. And then every school also has activities that um, to tap the interest of the, of the, the student in, in their schools. No? So you can see there a little list um, of some schools that we have, no? but the, the campus life is pretty comprehensive also. And I finished here make my presentation. Here you have my name and my, my contact information again. Uh, the QR code on the top, um, if you scan that code, you can, you can take a virtual tour of our campus, like kind of fun to kind of walk around with that. And then also on the top of the screen, I've shared the URL for an admission portal. So if you, you copy that um, URL, that'll take you directly to, to the admission portal and all the admission portal is done through a portal and the whole admission process can be done in English. Okay, with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you so much. And I'll just pass, um, to my next colleague. Excellent, thank you very much. So up next is the University of Guelph. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Christina. Uh, hello, everyone. Give me one second, just gonna upload my PowerPoint. There we go. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Thank you for your time today. My name, as Matt has said, I'm David. I'm one of the international recruitment officers here at the University of Guelph. And in the next six minutes or so, I'm gonna tell you as much as I can about my university. So where are we located? So we are located here in Canada, in the province of Ontario, about an hour southwest of Toronto, um, in the town or city of Guelph. Now, the population is around 133,000 people. Uh, we're about an hour from Toronto, as I mentioned. Our campus is in the heart of the city. Uh, within the city itself, you'll find a lot of things to do, such as music, art, or cultural festivals all year round. This is an area photo of what our campus looks like uh, on the top right is uh, top, sorry top left is our uh, recently renovated athletic fields and athletic facilities, you have a big green space on your right hand side that a lot of our students faculty and staff take advantage of in the summer, for example. Uh, we have residents and faculty buildings scattered across the campus, so it really is a very walkable campus, as you can see in the middle of the picture there's really no cars so from one end to another it takes you about five to ten minutes to get across uh, so really you shouldn't be late for anything uh, overview of our university, we're one of Canada's top comprehensive universities. Comprehensive meaning that we have a little bit of everything 
from both undergrad and a graduate level. We're ranked top, uh, we're ranked number four this year in terms of comprehensive universities here in Canada. Uh, we are a medium-sized university from a Canadian perspective with a little bit under 27,000 undergrad students. That comes from 120 different countries. Uh, over the past years, we have given out close to $26.3 million in terms of scholarships and bursaries for our students. So we are very aware that, you know, tuition is a big, budget and we will do everything we can to help you out and fund your university education. Besides that, we have over 3,500 different students enrolled in our co-op program uh, with 4,000 additional with on-campus jobs uh, and 1,000 or so with experimental learning opportunities. And all of these combined has led to 91.9% .9 of our students being employed within six months of graduation. How to apply? There's three different ways you can apply. You can apply through our Common App. You can apply through our Ontario University Application Center or apply directly through our high, uh, through our uh, university website. And if you have any questions in regards to admission or transfer credits or anything like that, my contact information is at the end. You can definitely take a look. In terms of what we offer, we have 14 different degree programs with over 85 and more different majors. As you can see right here, the different degree programs are listed below. Um, a lot of, we're very science focused. So animal science, human science, environmental science, agriculture, for example, we're super strong in. Uh, we have super popular business programs and also computing and engineering programs. Uh, so it really kind of depends on what you are interested in. Uh, if anything that you're interested in kind of piques your interest, feel free to contact me directly and then we can definitely talk more. Besides that, as I mentioned, we have our co-op and experimental learning opportunities. Co-op for us is a paid co-op. So you go out, you work and get paid. You don't pay any tuition while you are on your co-op work term. It tend to uh, thus extend your four-year degree to about five years, but you do have that added benefit of networking, uh, working experience and also getting paid at the same time. In terms of finances, as you can see right here, everything is listed in Canadian dollars. So tuition will probably be your big chunk. Um, everything else, compulsory fees and health insurance are mandatory for international students. Compulsory fees are also mandatory for our domestic students. Everything else is kind of case by case. You know, if you're living on campus, it really depends on the type of style of room you have, meal plan, textbooks, personal expenses, et cetera. We say in general, on average of 43,000 to about 58,000 Canadian will be a safe bet for one year of tuition with us. We definitely do have a lot of uh, different scholarships to help out our international students. Anything ranging from our entrance scholarship to our presidents or leadership scholarships. Also a lot of different in-course scholarships and bursaries that you can apply for once you are on campus. As far as for residents, you know, we have different type of residents. Uh, our first years are guaranteed as long as you are able to apply and pay your deposit on time. Uh, we have single, double, triple quad rooms. We have female only halls. So a lot of different choices you can choose from depending on your lifestyle. We have great food on campus as well. As you can see on the pictures on your right, these are not Photoshopped or Googled. These are actually what we get on campus. We have seven different dining halls with 20 different type of uh, restaurants or eateries within different uh, pubs and uh, coffee shops. So a lot of different choices for you. Besides that, we have our athletics. So varsity teams, intramural classes, sports clubs for you to really explore uh, either competitively or non-competitively. Uh, besides that, we have over 200 different clubs for you to choose from as well. Uh, anything from anime club to the engineering club, for example, uh, we have different organizations, student council, and student government, et cetera. Uh, but we also, as a school, we will support you in every single way or any way possible. Things like the international team, if you have any visa related questions, student health services, if you're feeling sick, we have doctors and nurses on hand, uh, student support network or health and performance center, if you wanna see a physiotherapy or massage therapy, for example, counseling services, if you're struggling with either just missing home or struggling with your first year, you can definitely find somebody to talk to. Uh, this will be the end of my presentation. My contact information is on the top right. Our social media is on the bottom right. You can definitely check out our social media. Another great way for you to check out what our campus looks like and what it's like to be on, uh, on the university. And I will pass it back to Matt. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, David. 
Uh, and next up, I'm going to turn things back over to Colin, who has a presentation on behalf of Queen's University Belfast. Yeah, thank you very much, Matt. Unfortunately, Peter could not be here with us this evening, so hopefully I will be able to do this correctly, and you'll hear from Peter without hearing from me. Hi, everybody. My name is Peter Brimstone, and I represent Queen's University Belfast in Northern Ireland. I'm sorry I can't be with you live this evening, but I've got a short presentation and a little video to play in my absence. Uh, Northern Ireland uh, is quite unique within the UK and Ireland. Um, we are geographically Irish, so we're there on the island of Ireland, uh, but we are politically and economically part of the UK. So it gives quite a unique university experience because it is that UK university experience, but on the island of Ireland. So a little bit of the best of both worlds. We like to think. We are well connected, though, uh, about an hour by plane to most UK cities, about two hours to most other European capitals. So it's really easy to get around. The city of Belfast itself is a small European capital city. Um, it is the UK's most affordable student city and, and is also the UK's safest city. It's a type of place you can walk around. We have fantastic public transport as well, but really you can walk everywhere. Um, about half the population of Belfast are under the age of 30, so it really is a young people's city. In terms of our university structure, it's on the UK system, which is three-year undergraduate degree, so direct entry into particular majors in undergrad, and you do it for three years. The application process is the UK system, so UCAS. Um, so there's an equal consideration deadline of January 26th, um, which allows you to apply up to five different majors or universities. Queen's itself is the ninth oldest university in the United Kingdom and part of the UK's Russell Group, which is an elite group of research universities. There's about 25,000 students at Queen's, about 200 of those each year from the United States majors or universities. Queen's itself is the ninth oldest university in the United Kingdom and part of the UK's Russell Group, which is an elite group of research universities. There's about 25,000 students at Queen's, about 200 of those each year from the United States in a huge range of programmes. Um, we do offer over 221 different uh, bachelor's programmes. Uh, we are world leading in things like international relations, conflict studies, politics, uh, you name it, uh, but all the way through to the STEM subjects and the arts as well. Um, we do also have a four-year liberal arts program. So if you're looking for something that's a bit closer aligned to the US model, but in the UK, that's a fantastic option as well. In terms of our entry requirements, we typically look uh, for a combination uh, of three from AP tests, the SAT or the ACT, or the honours dual enrolment classes. But like most UK universities, we are fully transparent with that. So if you've got an interest in a particular major, get in touch and we can tell you exactly what you need to get in based on what you are studying at the time. In terms of cost of attendance, you're looking at total cost of attendance of around 28 to 30,000 pounds. That's British pound sterling, which is about 35,000 US dollars. Um, and that's for everything. And we do have a range of scholarships. And we are also fully FAFSA accredited if you're looking to use US federal aid. My contact details are there on the screen. I'm just going to play you a short video now to let you know what Northern Ireland looks like um, from the perspective of our current US students. When you get on the trails, you can read about them, but you don't know what to expect. You can take a photo of it, but you can't explain to people what you're actually seeing without them seeing it too. By the time you get to the end of the hike, you know, it, it looks like you're in a fairy tale. It's just, it's hard to put in towards the experience that you'll, you'll have coming here. It's just, it's kind of a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> Three words I would use to describe Northern Ireland would definitely be breathtaking, mystical, adventurous. Some of my favorite things about traveling is one, the butterflies that you get in your stomach. The exposure to meeting new cultures, new faces, new people. The 
people of Northern Ireland, I would definitely say they're very giving. It really feels like you're welcomed into the culture, you're not, you don't feel like an outcast. People want to know the real you. The longer you're here, the more you just kind of get used to the rain, you embrace it. You can tell that there's age and tradition. Every little nook and cranny is, you know, more interesting than the last. Stepping off the plane at George Best Airport, it was kind of awe-inspiring. Just seeing everything in, in real life. Northern Ireland is everything that I thought it would be and more. Um, I've experienced so much in my time here and got to meet so many people and changed a lot, so I love it. Okay, thank you so much for um, the time there. I'm just going to share very quickly, uh, hope I'm getting the right chat window, uh, Peter's contact details. Uh, and please do reach out to Peter uh, either by email, uh, via telephone, or you can grab other details on the website. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much. And so next up is University College London. Thanks so much, Matt. Thank you, everyone. Just going to share my screen. Just one moment. Here we go. And can I just say how stunning Northern Ireland looks? Uh, I, feel, <laughs> I feel quite that that's hard act to follow, follow, but hopefully here's for something completely different. Um, so UCL, for those of you that don't know, University College London, we are a large um, world leading institution in the middle of the very fine city of London. Uh, and um, sometimes people don't know quite uh, where we sit in terms of uh, rankings uh, and league tables. And although that's not the be all and end all, we're very pleased to be uh, in amongst the best institutions uh, in the world rankings. So some of those institutions that you'll see uh, on the screen there will be very familiar to you, I guess. And um, so we're, yeah, we're very proud to be up there with some really fantastic uh, universities uh, from the US and indeed other parts of the world. In terms of UCL, we're a, a large comprehensive university, uh, certainly large by uh, UK standards, the largest in fact. Uh, we, we are now at 48,000 students. We're also a research intensive institution. And what that means is that we yeah, have world leaders in their field working every day to solve some of the world's uh, great problems. Because we're a comprehensive institution, our, our researchers can work together across disciplines. And that is something that we see very much as our strength. So whether it's COVID-19 or climate change, uh, infant mortality, there are lots and lots of different problems that the world is facing right now. And by bringing together people who are yeah, at the cutting edge and, and, and really at the, the top of their game in terms of what they're, what they're researching, bringing people together and, and, and working collaboratively, we think that we stand you know, the best chance of getting these things solved. So um, we're, we're, I'm always amazed how much um, research comes out of UCL pretty much on a daily basis. You hear um, the exciting things that are going on and it makes it a really exciting, buzzing place to be, both for uh, students and also for uh, members of staff such as me. Uh, we're also pretty proud um, that we've been doing things rather differently since we uh, were started. So we were founded back in 1826. That makes us the third oldest institution in England. And um, right from the start, we were, we were founded on principles of equality of opportunity and opening up education to everyone who could benefit from it. So at the time, um, to be able to go to university in England, you needed to be very rich, you needed to be um, a member, a, a practicing member of um, 
from the church and you also needed to be male. And if you didn't fit those three criteria, then the doors to uh, university were very firmly closed to you. So um, UCL right from the start was doing things differently, disrupting the thinking. And we like to think that we're still doing that now, fast forward uh, nearly 200 years. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's on what we're founded. We're a very forward looking institution, I would say, but because our past is so integral to who we are today, we like to mention um, this gentleman here, Jeremy Bentham, who's the person on whose ideas we were founded. I talked about us being a comprehensive institution. We have 11 different faculties, as we call them. That's uh, subject groupings, really. Pretty much, as you can see, covering everything. We think a great strength at UCL is our breadth. So um, we don't specialize in, in one particular area, but we're strong across the board. And you can pretty much study everything at, at UCL. Um, within the 11 different faculties, we have 72 different departments. And below that, we have 435 discrete undergraduate programs. And you will be applying for a particular program when you apply to the UK. One thing all our 435 programs have in common is that they use small group teaching as a key uh, method of uh, the UCL education. And um, what we want to do within the con uh, concept of the, those small group classes is to encourage you to develop your own ideas in a collaborative and supportive uh, environment and to really become the critical thinkers. But we think that's a, a key skill that you will need um, in life after university, and we want to help you develop that. So no matter what you study, you will find that you um, get supported uh, along the way in becoming a, a critical thinker. Here's um, a little map of where we are, uh, an aerial shot, um, just really to prove that we are in central London. London has 40 for zero universities. I can say that they're not all quite as central as, as we are. Uh, London's a sprawling city of 9 million people. And um, yeah, the universities are spread out uh, across the whole um, of the city. But UCL is in the center. This is an area called Bloomsbury. It's aesthetically pleasing, historically interesting, uh, not, not any high rise buildings. Uh, there's lots of greenery around. It's a really nice and pleasant part of London. And it's also very walkable. And London is a very walkable city. So people walk around um, and, and, and it's a nice place to be. And the great thing about UCL is it is actually a campus. So we have a campus university with the added benefit of being surrounded by London and all it has to offer. I don't think there's such a thing as a, as a typical UCL student, but um, if, we, if we look at the kind of traits that some of our students have, or the people who are interested in us have, or the sort, sort of things that we would value and look for, then these are a few of the things just to articulate those. I hope you like what you've heard and that whets your appetite. If so, come join me in the Zoom room. I'd love to have a chat with you there and do check out our catalogue in the meantime to find out those 435 different programmes. Thanks so much and back to you, Matt. Excellent, thank you very much. And next up is Queen Margaret University. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, and welcome to um, a little bit of Scotland. If you just bear with me for one second, I'm just gonna jump on and get my slides set up. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, my name is Greg Lawson. I'm the International Recruitment Manager here in uh, Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, a lot of you, um, just to prove, again, Scottish people make a joke about the weather all the time, that it doesn't always rain in Scotland. That's not a photoshopped image of our campus. Um, it is one of the days where we had blue skies um, and uh, it was quite warm, if I remember correctly, when I took the photograph. Um, we've uh, seen a, a brilliant uh, presentation from Joe from, from London and uh, from Peter over in Belfast. I echo um, what Joe said about Peter's presentation. He's always a, a hard act to follow in terms of going on after, after he's presented. But um, just a little bit of geography again for, for the UK and for Scotland in particular. Um, those of uh, the presenters that have heard me before will have heard my joke about Scotland being at the top of the UK. That's geographically and also um, in terms of being biased. Um, uh, Scotland is at the top of the UK for other reasons as well. Um, we're based in the city of Edinburgh and just some, some images there just of the city, the kind of skyscape there, um, trying to highlight really the kind of modernity of the city, um, the, you know, the, the, the ancient in terms of the castle at the bottom left, um, the Balmoral Hotel is, is a clock tower there, but also um, you can see a little bit of the Royal Mile just at the kind of left side of that image. To the, you know, the transport network, Edinburgh's got an amazing tram network, 
um, an expanding tram network as well in terms of um, going down from Leith to the airport in terms of getting about the city, it's really easy. Um, like London as well, it's very walkable. Um, Edinburgh is a very compact city as well. It's about 475,000 people as a population. Um, a very friendly and a very warm welcome you'll get um, when you arrive as well. If you want to go a wee bit out of the city centre as well, you can go over to the uh, the world famous Forth Bridge as well, which um, spans the, uh, the Firth of Forth from, from Edinburgh across to the Kingdom of Fife. That's at the bottom right uh, there. Um, again, just an over and sort of overview and aerial view of um, the Princess Street area of, it, of the city. So that's going to mean a uh, shopping area as well. I uh, have some great restaurants in George Street just behind that. And also, um, I, you know, I, I kind of, I was going to say a kind of controversial image of, of the Edinburgh International Festival that takes place every August as well. So that's um, the, the kind of world's largest arts and cultural festival that takes place in the city every year um, in August. We reckon probably about 2 million people come to that every year. So the city um, is, is, you know, almost um, five times greater in size than it would be normally. Um, population-wise, obviously. Um, again, a very warm welcome to Edinburgh, but you're, it's a very student-focused city as well. There's four universities in the city, Queen Margaret being one of them. Uh, we're on the east side of the city, very well connected, six minutes by train to the city centre. But if you are looking to spend some time and, and spread your wings a little bit within the UK, you can be in London in about four hours, 20 minutes by um, electric train um, and sustainability, is something that we're all about um, in Edinburgh. Um, I will mention the, the, the flight time as well, but an hour, but again, we, we always push our students towards the most economically um, and the most um, environmentally uh, friendly way of travelling. Um, to talk a little bit about the campus itself, um, we, the university was established in 1875, and I'll come to that in a second, but the modern campus that we've seen in the first image was purpose-built, um, and the students of, sort of the early 2000s did have a, a great um, intro, uh, input and cont contribution to the design and what the, ca the campus really needed. The campus was opened by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in 2007, but we've been on a, quite a journey since then. Um, as I say, founded in 1875 as the Edinburgh School of Cookery and um, to provide educational opportunities for women back in that day. Um, but we have obviously moved um, on. We've got a new campus um, and that is purpose built in terms of what we need today in the 21st century. Um, again, for those of you who watch Great, Great British Bake Off, um, uh, Prue Leith is our chancellor. Um, and again, some famous alumni as well in terms of anyone watches Grey's Anatomy or the, the famous Scottish film Train Spotting. Um, set in the city of Edinburgh, um, Kevin McKidd, um, who plays Owen Hunt in Grey's Anatomy, is there. We've got about four to 5,000 uh, campus-based students, um, not all on campus every day because of our, our schools and the way we're set up. I'll talk again about that in a little second. Um, but we are um, ranked within the top half, the top 50% um, of UK universities as per the uh, Times and the Sunday Times Good University Guide 2022. So, we have two schools um, at the university. I'll start with the School of Health Sciences. So if you're wanting to be a physiotherapist or a dietitian, maybe a speech pathologist or a speech language therapist um, in the UK, um, we have a, a, a number of um, undergraduate master's level courses in health. They are all four year undergraduate master's level um, courses. They um, are all with their own specialized built in supervised clinical placements, which the university will take a take charge of owner, you know, an ownership of setting up for you. So we can we can take care of that. You know you're going to get um, what we call HCPC accredited um, healthcare and professions council um, accredited courses that will allow you to then work as a health professional in the UK. Tuition fees are around about um, and no higher than $21,000 per year. Um, our other school is the School of Arts, Social Sciences and Management. And this is the kind of, I'm not going to say the health school is not a fun part, but this certainly is um, the part that the students have a lot of fun um, as well. So that's your film and media, your drama, your performing arts, uh, public relations, communications. But again, looking at Edinburgh and being the kind of um, tourist focused city as well with the, the festivals um, that take place, hospitality and tourism is massive. Um, and, and that's something we really want to put into sort of uh, context as well of employability, not just when you're with us in, in Edinburgh, but certainly um, job prospects thereafter. Um, a lot of our, um, and give you an example, our costume design students, um, costume design and construction students to be specific, will have jobs lined up at the end of year three. So they've got another year of study to do, but they've already got jobs uh, lined up and they're very well sought after students again. For your bachelor uh, and honours degree um, awards, study abroad of, of, uh, options are available as well. Something that a lot of universities maybe don't talk about at this moment in time. Um, thanks, Matt. I'm just assuming I've got a little bit of time left. Um, is the study abroad option? Don't just come and spend a year with it in Scotland. Go and go go to Canada. Go to Australia. Go to New Zealand um, and enjoy some time there. Um, our courses there, and that figure is correct. It's about ten thousand dollars or seven thousand pounds a year. Um, 
talk to me again. I'm happy to talk you through the COVID disruption that we understand um, you've all been through in terms of your academic uh, studies um, at school. So, you know, we will be as flexible as we can with that. Um, scholarships, again, everyone, being Scottish, it's all about money and saving money. Um, not to, to generalise myself too much, but, you know, come and speak to us about scholarships. We are FAFSA licensed as well. Um, I'll not go through the stats because we're running out of time. Accommodation, single occupancy rooms, 800 of them, all en suite, all with their own heating, Wi-Fi. There's some prices there. There's no meal plans. And that's something else I wanted to make a, a point of. We want you to adult. We want you to be adults and grown up. We want you to look after yourself and learn to stand on your own two feet. Some lovely pictures of our campus accommodation there. So it's comfortable, it's modern, it's clean, it's new. Um, and you can uh, apply for the accommodation through our website there. Um, just again, mention the, the dreaded C word in terms of COVID. We are teaching face-to-face. -face. A lot of our courses are health-based. We've taught face-to-face -face right the way through the pandemic in a very safe um, and, and basically safety-focused manner. We have small classes um, that has allowed us to be more um, uh, flexible in terms of the teaching that we can uh, carry out and still carry out. We have returned fully to face-to-face -to -face as well. Um, student support's massive at QMU. Again, I can talk to you in a little bit more detail. My team in international are here for you from a uh, point of, of first introduction through to well after you're, you're uh, with us. Last but by no means, this is my contact details. Um, if anyone does want to chat, I shall be here after the presentation. Thank you very much and good night for now. Excellent, thank you very much. And our final presentation of this session is from Loughborough University. Hi everyone, I'm having a few technical difficulties with Zoom at the minute, so my presentation is loading and um, hopefully it will be on in a moment. Um, but yeah, my name is Lucy Pandit and I am from Loughborough University in the UK. Can, can you guys see my screen at all? No worries, if not, I can just talk through. It looks like it's still trying to load. No worries at all. Honestly, Zoom and my computer are not friends today. This is the second time it's done it um no worries if not but um yeah i'll just get chatting if the presentation shows that's great if not um no problem at all um bro, i think you should be able to see it now yes we can brilliant fantastic so yeah, you don't just have to um stare at my face and boring background for for ages um yes yeah, my name is lucy i'm from loughborough university in the UK. So we are right in the centre of England in a place known as the Midlands. Um, so we are about an hour and 20 minutes north of London, if you get the super slow train, um, if you get a fast one, which is about three every hour, and um, you're just over an hour away from London. So um, when you visit our website, you'll probably see that there are two campuses. Um, we do have one in Loughborough itself, um, but we have one in London as well for postgraduate study. So for any of you out there that are looking to pursue um, a master's degree or um, a PhD after your undergraduate, um, our London campus is a great option for that too. So in terms of Loughborough itself, it's a market town in Leicestershire. Um, so those of you who are soccer fans may have heard of Leicester City before. Um, so we are located not too far from there stadium which is in the, the city centre in Leicester um, and we're in the East Midlands so we're really well connected to lots of different cities that you may recognise the name of um, including Birmingham, Manchester, uh, Leeds, Lincoln and of course Nottingham is only 20 minutes away from our campus. Um, we have lots of local airports near us, you've got Birmingham and East Midlands uh, for those of you who um, want to travel around Europe whilst you're um, studying overseas um, and then when you fly into the UK itself to start your studies or when you've been home um, for vacation periods, uh, London Heathrow is just over two hours away from us. So nice and easy to get to Loughborough. And we also run free shuttle buses um, at the start of term for our international students to get to campus and for family members as well. So in terms of campus um, itself, this is our campus. You can see it's lovely and green. Um, it's one of the largest campuses in the UK. Um, and as you can see, there's lots of sports fields. So Loughborough is very well known for sport, um, both in terms of teaching it, where we're ranked number one in the world, and also for participating in sport. So um, number one in the UK for 40 years running now in the books table. So uh, never been beaten in terms of competitive sport in the UK. Um, so for those of you in, that are into sport, great. Um, but in terms of other subject areas, there's lots of different areas to study. 
Um, and in fact, our engineers are actually the biggest population of students on campus. So um, we'll touch upon that briefly a little later in the presentation. Um, really proud of our rankings. We're top 10 all UK league tables. And it seems like the number seven is our lucky number this year. Um, seven across the board in some of the biggest um, tables in the UK. So the basics itself, Loughborough was founded in 1909. Um, and it became a university officially in 1966. We've got over 20,000 staff and students from all over the world. Um, our students come from over 130 different countries, and it's a really diverse place to study. Um, lots of new friends to make from around the world and lots of places to visit um, after you've studied with us. Um, and as I say, we teach lots of different subject areas. So you can see from the pictures on screen just how much um, the campus has grown. Um, so the photo on the left is when we first started as a college um, and we have grown from there significantly. Uh, but those two buildings still stand on campus, um, as you can see in the, the image above, um, and I'm lucky enough to work in that building. So yeah, very, very proud of that. And our international students get to visit that building quite a lot um, with the international office being based there. So in terms of subject areas that you can study at Loughborough, um, I won't read all of them out, but I'll leave it on the screen for you guys to digest. Um, as I mentioned, obviously, um, sport and health sciences rank number one in the world for that, but all of our other course areas as well are incredibly popular. Um, some of the areas that are most popular amongst our North American students include um, business and economics, our engineering programs as well, um, and also um, our geography and social science um, programs to prove really popular. But of course, as everybody else has mentioned, if you want to come and chat to me after this session um, about a particular course, please feel free to um, pop in and see me. We can delve into each area in more detail. Um, something that we're really proud of at Loughborough is our careers and employability support. So we have a careers network that you can access throughout your time at Loughborough for two years afterwards. Um, they're available to support you for a variety of different things, so application advice, mock interview practice, um, assessment centres, and we have one of the largest careers fairs in Europe, um, which is now held over two days because there's so many employers that want to come and talk to, to Loughborough students and future graduates. Um, and we're really proud to say that work placements are offered on every single course. The majority of courses, this is optional. A few of the business courses, um, it is compulsory, but we can explore that with you um, as you choose your, your course of choice. 95% um, of our graduates in employment or further study within six months. Again, something we're really proud of. So there's lots of ways to develop your employability at Loughborough. Hands-on experience, of course, by undertaking a placement year. Um, but just like Greg was saying at QMU, we also offer the opportunity for you to um, study abroad whilst you're already studying abroad. So not only can you study in England, you can also then take a study abroad year or either six months to do it alongside a placement um, and take part in that too. So I think I've seen Matt pop up. I think my six minutes are over. Um, but that is the that is the main um, main points about Loughborough itself. And please do come and chat to me afterwards. Um, and I'd be more than happy to tell you about Loughborough in more detail. And also put my email address in the chat. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so that takes us to the end of this session. Um, I wanted to see Colin. Do you have any any words uh, of, of closure before I wrap things up? I guess not. So um, it, uh, let me just get my slides up here. And we want to say thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, the um, a reminder to attend those those zoom meetings with all of the different institutions that have presented tonight. There's a link in the chat to a list of where all those are. Uh, and we do appreciate your feedback. So when you close the Zoom window, there will be a link to a quick survey. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, and you'll be able to find a recording of this session, as well as all of the other sessions that were part of this college fair um, online at strivescan.com slash ICO. So that ends our session. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you to our presenters for all the great information that you shared. And have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.